Hey everyone, and welcome to Invisible Walls, episode 214, here on the brand new GameTrailers.com. That's right, it's our first week with the brand new site. We really hope you guys are loving it so far. Obviously, with any site launch, there are some issues, so a big part of this show is going to be answering your questions about the new site. Here to do that today, Ryan Stevens. Hello. Mr. Daniel Bloodworth. Hey. And Marcus Beer. Hello. Marcus is going to be uh, giving us the questions since he uh, does not have the ability to answer a lot of these. He, he hasn't been he's working on the He's the avatar of the users. <laughs> I am. I, I, am right. I am the union rep, yeah. basically. And we're just going to plow straight in. So uh, first question is from Zevi. And this came actually from the Game Trailers forums. Imagine that. Yeah. Um, do you plan on tweaking the video player? The whole automatic quality switching is making video look worse than SD. Easily the most popular question, concern, complaint about the new site is the video player. Uh, we'll go on record to tell you that we are not happy with it either. Um, and I can give you a definitive answer right now, but I can say that we are looking into changing the player. Um, I think the biggest issue is that we are allowing two of the lowest renditions to run in the player. Yeah. Uh, so it could end up being a compromise where we drop the, last, the lowest two renditions so you never see that horribly pixelated version of the video, and then maybe you have to buffer a little bit, or it could be a complete change of the player. Uh, we've only launched for about a day and a half now at this point, uh, so there's a lot of discussions going on behind the scenes, but I think it's safe to say that all of us feel their pain. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we have to watch the, the videos the more than you do. So. Yeah, I mean, we have to watch a lot more videos than you guys do. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, for instance, you know, I have a web book that I use at home. Uh, it's perfect for what I typically need, you know, a laptop for, and I'm unable to watch videos on GT with my web book now. So, we're right there along with you guys. Uh, we know it's a problem. Uh, we apologize you guys are all having issues. Uh, the other question that we, we've been getting a lot is, can you download videos? Is there a, the ability to download videos? Yes, there is. It's right. It's not where it used to be. It's not a part of the player. It's actually down below the player, down below the thumbs up, thumbs down rating. So if you click there, it'll load it up. It's actually kind of a case-by-case -case basis on where you, whether you can actually download. Yeah, there we're, a lot. we're looking into making that so every video can be downloaded with the... I don't know if you guys noticed, there's been a couple exceptions over the years where some people have said the videos can be streaming only. There's probably like 10 videos on the site that are right. like that. But for the most part, we are working on making to sure that everything will be downloadable, including invisible walls, which may take a little bit longer yeah. than some of the other stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, the button is there. It seems like my computer at home, when I click the button, once the player opens up, I can save the video there, but my computer here at work won't allow me to do that. So it's kind of all over the map. One thing I would say is if the new player is giving you a ton of problems, just click that download link and it will sort of give you the ability to watch it in HD. And actually it loads so quickly that yeah. you could pretty much just click play and just watch the HD version that way if you want to. So. But yeah, I think we will try to fix that and make sure it's a dialog box like it's supposed to be. So it just saves it wherever you want it. Yep. Um, we've been working on this site for a long, long time. Um, and yeah, a couple things have slipped through the cracks here and there. Um, I think that's just pretty typical with site relaunches. I've been through, I don't know how many at this point through my career. Uh, and I have to say, this is probably the smoothest one I've ever been a part of. Uh, take that for what it's worth. <laughs> but uh, you know, I worked at GameSpot before where we had site redesigns that were complete disasters. Uh, I work on Spike.com. Our redesign there was had a bunch of issues. Uh, this has actually been one of the smoothest ones I've ever been a part of. So take that for what it's worth. It's pretty typical to have these uh, problems when you first launch a website. Next question, Marcus. Next question from JC, not to be confused with JZ. Or Jesus. Um, or <laughs> <laughs> Jeezy Creasy is asking, uh, is there going to be a mobile version like before? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. We are working on the mobile version of the site. It's not quite done yet. We felt a little bad about it, and then we realized that Ars Technica also relaunched their new site without a mobile version, <laughs> and we felt a little better. Um, but it is in the works. Uh, one thing I will say is the site should work better with Android and iOS devices now than it did prior, at least. I heard you couldn't do age gates, though. The yeah, the iPad videos. Uh, iPad was always going straight to the main site and not a mobile site. It was i phones that you know on the browser detect was going to the the special site. Um, I know people are working on the age gate issue right now. But yeah. Videos are playing and stuff. I know some of the social things are slowing down things, but actually if a video is not age gated, I it's working pretty okay on yeah. uh, the iPads. 
Yep. Next question, Marcus. Sorry, I was just checking the mobile site. <laughs> <laughs> um, next question. Uh, one of a few that we had from uh, Queege. When I logged in with my old site account, I was asked for my date of birth. Does this mean that I'm not going to get pestered by age verification demands for virtually every video I watch anymore? And I'm truncating that because... It's really long. Yeah. Uh, yes. I mean, honestly, the old site, if you had registered as an adult, you wouldn't see any age gates. Um, so I don't know if... I think there are some people that had problems with it. I don't know if it's a good thing. I, 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 I haven't have put problems. an age gate on our site in three years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, my, the only time I would get the age gates is when it logged me out just for shits and giggles, which Chrome would do every couple of weeks. Yeah, just every once in a while it would log you out, or if we'd update something on the site that was related to community, sometimes it would log you out. But otherwise, I mean, literally, I would stay logged in for weeks and weeks. And the new, the new site should be that way as well. Uh, once you put it in an age gate for the first time, you should not see an age gate again. Um, and make sure you're logged in and you're registered. If you're just coming to the site and you're not logged in, logged in and registered, you're going to get an age gate every single time. That's the way the law works. We have to do it that way. Once you've registered as an adult, someone who's of age, and you put in your date of birth into one age gate, you should never see an age gate again. So make sure that you're logged in. Also, I've been seeing a lot of comments. People are like, where do I log in? <laughs> oh, yeah, the bar on down the bottom. Down at the bottom. Yeah. Even I figured that one out. Yeah, the login is down at the bottom right-hand side of the screen uh, as a part of the activity bar down there. So that's where you go to log in. Once you're logged in, if you're of age and you put that accurate date into your registration, you should never see an age gate again. Next question, also from Queech. Um, Invisible Walls is the most awesome show on the history of the planet, but I can't find a Are link you to... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my mum. Um, no, actually, the question is, I can't, f uh, um, I can't find the option to download Invisible Walls no. as MP3 anywhere. Are you stopping this as an option? I usually, usually listen on my phone, so video only is going to suck for me. Please let me download it as an MP3. Well, on his phone, video only shouldn't bother him. He just plugs his headphones in and he listens to it. <laughs> Whether he watches the video or not, it should make a difference. Obviously, the issue there is the file size. Yeah. Uh, if you just want an MP3, it won't take up as much space on your phone. Um, we do not have that functionality right now, and we're very sorry about that, but it is coming, uh, and we're working on it right now. I so. may be able to do a workaround. Uh, check, check the side mission, maybe, while you're watching this. And yeah. maybe, maybe we'll have a, an MP3 you guys can grab. Yeah, maybe. maybe we'll try to figure it out temporarily until we get the permanent fix in place. Um, at a certain point, we just had to kind of call it a day and say we need to get the new site out. The problem that we've had with launching the site is that, you know, we talked about, about it on the show a couple months ago. We're like, the site is coming soon. What would happen is we'd find one issue with the site, and then we would say, oh, here comes E3. Well, we can't launch a site that's not perfect before E3. There's too much on the line. It's too important to make sure we get the videos to you guys, so we would postpone it. And it, it just kept happening. Uh, as soon as we that you know we we found this little window between E3 and Comic Con, and so once we saw that window and we started looking down the line and we're like, well then there's Comic Con and then there's Gamescom and there's Tokyo Game Show, we realized we had to launch it. So some features haven't quite been finished yet. Uh, they are going to be coming online very soon. Uh, but we felt like we needed to get the new site out there, get you guys using it in this kind of grace period that we have between uh, big conventions. So that's why you don't have the functionality yet. Maybe Ryan can work some. Ones and zeros magic to make that happen over the next uh, day or two. I'm a binary wizard. <laughs> <laughs> next question. I think it's about time we moved on so to some community questions. OK. Uh, and the first one's from Kia with the question, when are the 100 by 100 avatars making a return, if indeed they are? Avatars, pretty much what you got right now is what you're going to get. Um, the system that we have for community is built by this company called Flux, and Viacom, our mothership, owns Flux. And so that's the community system that all Viacom sites are going to use, and therefore that is what we have to use. Now that said, we're really the first site at Viacom to use this stuff. So um, we're kind of the guinea pig, and the good news is that they're sticking with us for the next couple months, the team that works on that stuff, so that we can work with them to make it better because ultimately they want to get it to a good place on GT, and they can roll it out to all the other sites. So what you're getting right now is not what you're going to be stuck with, so to speak. Uh, but one thing I think is not going to change is the avatars. They should stay the same size as they are now. Not sure. But I, I think, I was talking to Jamie earlier, I think they're supposed to be 100 by 100, and for some reason they're not showing right. So, I mean, it's, again, like a lot of things, it's being tweaked and 
not exactly showing up the way it's supposed to be. But Can you have a bigger avatar in the forums? Uh, I think that's what he's asking about specifically. For the forums. forums. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. So I thought he meant about the, like, the community bar and everything. No, it's, uh, it's okay. specifically a forums. Specifically forum. Oh, yeah, the forums we actually have a lot more leeway over, to be honest. I didn't realize that's what the question was about. Um, we do have a lot more control over the forums. And just like with our community system from Flux, uh, the, the forum team is going to stick with us because, again, this is the first time they're really rolling it out on any of Viacom's sites. Uh, so they're going to be sticking with us for the next two months, uh, making a ton of tweaks. In fact, the forums are my big project for the summer. Um, I'm going to be working very closely with that team to improve them. Uh, so hit me on Twitter, at Dinfire, with any su suggestions you might have for our forums. It's going to be a three or four month long project I'm going to be working on. I want to make it as awesome as possible. Also, going back to discussions we had on the show before, uh, I have the ideas to work on a VIP forum for game trailers. Um, and one of the ideas might be that you have to use your real name on the forum, and it will be heavily moderated. Um, we want to, and I've mentioned this personally, I want to have a place where I feel good about interacting with you guys, where there's not a bunch of spam, a bunch of fanboy BS, uh, some place where you can go and discuss games intelligently with other people who want to discuss them intelligently and not with people who have a favorite this or that that's going to taint everything they say. So that is one of my big projects for this summer, and uh, hopefully we can work together to make the forums awesome. I so think they're already way better than they were, though. So what you're saying is I'm banned from the VIP. You're done. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. banned, man. Yeah. And, uh, What's your IP address? And I think it's safe to say that everything's going to be in a state of flux yeah. for the next couple of months. <laughs> oh. Definitely. Yeah, thank you. All right, next question from Nixus. Uh, I'd like to know if there's going to be some way for members to get exposure for their content, which sounds really kind of dirty. Um, <laughs> before we had the community page where you could see the most popular blogs and you could even feature your own uh, content. And we've had the popular user movie page, et cetera, et cetera. These things look like they are gone now. Are there any plans to change this? No, there really isn't. Um, it there's, was a there's still user movies. Well, yeah, there's still user movies, but as far as creating a place to feature them on the home page, I kind of doubt that's going to happen. And the big reason is just because the usage of our user movies has fallen off a cliff, essentially. People aren't uploading as many videos, um, certainly not as many original videos. Uh, there's really no reason for us to feature user movies, which is the same trailer that we already have posted on the site. Um, for whatever reason, for a myriad reasons, uh, yeah, that activity has just fallen off. So we were giving up a lot of real estate on the homepage for that stuff. And truth be told, they just weren't performing all that well. So. I think they're, they're still filtering into the video hub. The search finds them and stuff like that. I mean, Paradise and Fairies, if you're watching, keep making your say hello videos. I love them. So. Yeah, and if you go onto our new video hub, which is what I like to call GT Classic, um, if you just click on videos in that top nav bar, It'll take you to the list of all the videos that we published. Um, you know, ob obviously the home page doesn't have that anymore. Uh, there's a little thing you can filter that says user movies, so you can easily go there and uh, see the user movies. So check that out. All right, last question from uh, Colombian Loom. Where is the friend list? If it's been replaced by the tracking thing, I only have four people that I'm tracking. Does this mean I have to start all over again? Well, no. that's a little <laughs> the little flux bar on the bottom. The the Activity, activity bar, bar, the stalker bar, if you will. <laughs> um, as your friends rejoin, re-log in to the new GT, they should start popping up into your, your tracking list. And if you, if for some reason it doesn't happen, if you see them post a comment or you see them do anything, you can just click right on their name and click tracking. It's pretty, yeah. pretty simple. I've actually seen them pop up in real time. I was like looking at my list of friends and I saw images start appearing as people were logging into the new site. Yeah, Flux definitely has a lot of potential. Um, I think we may have to just like tamp down on some of its stuff, make it a little more free flow or less free flowing, a little more rigid, give people a little more control. But it's it's really cool of what it can do. Yeah, the the, the possibilities there are pretty impressive. Um, and the good news is that they're listening to us. A yeah. lot of times when we do stuff, it's like, hey, hey, we want this, and they're like, well, that's not going to work for everybody. Uh, we're not going to do it. But because we're the guinea pig here, uh, and they trust us because we have such a huge community on GT. Uh, they're actually taking all of our suggestions to heart and making changes based on it. So ultimately, I think we'll get both Flux and our forums to a place where people will be very, very happy with them. Yeah, so feel free to track us. Uh, I'm IW hyphen Ryan. I'm a GT Shane. Bloodworth GT. A night gamer. I have one last question. How much sleep have you had this week? <laughs> what sleep? Is that <laughs> a, is that a <laughs> What's that? I haven't yeah. slept in like a month. <laughs> we went from E3 to our best of E3, which is just a total grind. 
And then we go straight from that to the replatforming. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we pulled an all-nighter the night that it launched, literally. I stayed up till like, 8 in the morning. We were on a phone call starting at 2 in the morning, and then I got off the call at, like, 7.30. Couldn't sleep because my mind was going crazy afterwards. Went to bed at 8-something. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a long, long run for us just in general over the last month, six weeks, something like that. Um, but uh, finally, I think we'll be getting some sleep. I went to bed last night at, like, 10.30. Well, I'd like to slept for like 12 hours. I'd like to say that I was up at 2 a.m. Wednesday morning cheering you on. Yeah, you were. <laughs> but I wasn't. <laughs> I can't. You played Sorry. a game, right? <laughs> no, I was actually tucked up in my bed ready to watch the footy the next day. Footy. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, yeah, it's been a long haul, but we're finally coming down the home stretch. The other part of it, too, is that while we're doing all this other stuff, uh, we haven't been able to create original content, which is obviously what GT is all about, and what really the new site's all about. Uh, making it easier for you guys to get to that stuff. So um, This is original content. We're yeah. creating it right now. This is about <laughs> all we've had the time to do, though, over the last several weeks. Um, obviously, E3, we put out a lot of stuff, but that was all you know, aggregated content we got from publishers or you know, first takes that we did based upon the games that were there. But uh, things should be kicking into full gear here on GT very soon, and I think people will have a better understanding and appreciation of the homepage once that stuff starts happening, uh, why we've done it. Um, I mean, just anecdotally, from being you know around the interwebs over the last couple of days with the new site, you know, a lot of people. Uh, one thing I see is the platforms. You can't tell what platform videos are for. Um, that's something we're looking into into fixing. Um, what are some of the other ones that you've seen uh, floating out there that are pretty consistent? I just think the video player has kind of been the eclipsing been, the sun yeah. and other complaints. Yeah, yeah, that seems to be rightfully so. Yeah, uh, yeah. rightfully so. One thing. Uh, kind of was brought up and I saw last night, we're not seeing the uh, the game info box under the review. It's on all the other videos, but not the review page. Oh, here's another thing that drives me bonkers. It was definitely an oversight when we were designing the site, is the fact that once you go to the player page to watch our reviews, you see the score and all the component scores on that page. It's like the world's biggest spoiler. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it kind of takes all the mystery out of watching the review and you can see everything right there. So we are removing that from our review pages as well. So you guys have a little bit of a surprise at the end when we roll out the up on. We finally got Marco's new graphics in there now, though. Review graphics, have you seen them, Marcus? Uh, I haven't as yet. Pinball. Yeah, Good Marco stuff. Rosado um, handles all our motion graphics here at GT. And he created the brand new graphics package for our reviews. Uh, the first review is Steel Battalion that use the graphics. <laughs> Probably not the best way to roll them out, uh, but uh, I love them. I think they look great. Um, interested to hear all your guys' feedback. What did, what did you think of the sound design? Sound design is actually amazing. Do you know the editor of Invisible Walls actually made the sounds? I was not aware of that, actually. Yeah. We have an editor. I thought we just basically threw the video to a to a monkey. To a blender. To a monkey, <laughs> uh, monkey tossing three bananas. Right and, uh, <laughs> and you cut it all together. Yeah, Anton M. Cry right now. Yeah, Anton, the guy who runs uh, our second camera here from Visible Walls, did the sound design. Uh, looks great. Make sure you congratulate him in the comments as well. And uh, I am really happy with those. Cut out of the show as we speak. <laughs> uh, so that's it. Those are the main questions I think we keep getting constantly um, about the new site. As issues bubble up uh, over the next couple of weeks, we're not going to ignore them. Um, so make sure you keep oh, yeah. sending those. Got to pages of things I just jot down. Here. Yeah. So we'll, we'll continue to answer questions, and uh, we're obviously going to continue to try to make the site slight better, uh, make improvements, uh, listen to your feedback. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the new site. Um, I think it's a lot cleaner. It loads a lot faster. It works a lot faster. Um, anything that was on the home page before is really only one click away. Um, and I, that's another question, actually. There are people, why, people are like, why did you remove all the stuff from the home page? Well, that's because if you didn't use GT every day, our home page was a mess, a disaster. Like, people could not figure out where they were supposed to go, what they're supposed to be looking at. Obviously, if you use GT every day, you knew the shows were on the left and the newest videos in the middle and the community on the right. But new users to GT were completely overwhelmed and intimidated by the site. And truth be told, the organization of the site was pretty god awful. It was just too cluttered. So big part of the replatform was make it easier for people who don't use the site every day, but not stretch the limits uh, for the people who have been coming to the site. So we wanted to make sure that anything that used to be on the home page is one click away for the people who continue to come to the game trailers on a daily basis. So the that search was option now works 150 times better, by the way. Uh, Some people will disagree with you on that. <laughs> um, I basically typed in my own name uh, uh, yesterday, and I found I found the annoying game worst of E3s so quickly. Good. Whereas before it was like 
the hey Ashley, what you're playing or anything with the word gaming came right, up. Right. So I got to say, it is a, it's a lot more streamlined. We're working on search as well. That's yeah. another thing that yeah, we're working we'll on. More here's here's search. Because I think everyone sitting here would disagree with you on <laughs> here, that. Here's, search. My, here's my pro tip: go to the last page of results. Yeah, yeah. and you'll probably get what you want, but it's we're, there. We're very aware of the issues, and that's also being worked on. So. That's it. Uh, maybe we'll address this for the next uh, couple of weeks on the show. A lot shorter segments than what we did today. But uh, hope you're enjoying the new GT. You have found our fortress. All right, so now we're going to talk about some actual video games here on Invisible Walls. Uh, first, probably the biggest release of the week. Finally, we get DLC for Skyrim. Dawn Guard is out there. Marcus, have you been playing Dawn Guard? No. No. No, 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 no. How are you not playing that? Because um, is this one of the cases where sometimes no means yes? No, <laughs> no means no means hell to the fuck no. Um, <laughs> basically, I've been playing on the PC my, yeah. with my with my uh, my Skyrim, and I have got ninety odd hours yeah. clocked up. I actually have like one hundred and sixty. You think <laughs> I'm gonna go back onto an inferior version, which? Guess what? The Xbox 360 version is inferior to PC because it's not fucking good. Um, and basically, that would be the definition of an go. You know, go through. Uh, <laughs> go, you know, play that. Play that version. No, uh, I'm, I'm not playing. I got sent the code. In all fairness, but I refuse to play it until it comes out on the PC. And I'm actually absolutely sick to the back teeth of this sort of treatment, especially for PC owners, because PC owners have kept Skyrim going. The mods that have come out yeah. have been superb. They've, re they've really kept the community going and producing some really kick-ass stuff. And well, it's not like Bethesda's going to do it. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's kept Bethesda's name they, and they Skyrim's name in, yeah. you know, in, in, the, you know, in the public eye. And honestly, I think it's really disgusting of Bethesda to do this, especially as in 12 months' time, they are going to be begging PC owners to put 60 bucks, uh, you know, pull 60 bucks out and then probably 14 bucks a month again for Elder Scrolls Online. Which, by the way, I gotta say this because I never said this before, looked like one of the biggest turds of E3, E3 to me. <laughs> it really looked like, it didn't look as good as friggin' Oblivion. So, I mean, anybody who's saying that that, that, was, a, that was good, we need to have a chat. So yeah, I'm really furious with Bethesda right now, and everybody knows I love Bethesda, but um, I am absolutely disgusted. I won't be playing the 360 version. Miguel has been playing it, but he's actually been sick, so he's not been able to go through it properly yet. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about it. Well, I, I will say the one puzzle I saw that, and I've seen this on the, the interwebs as well, the one puzzle that uh, everyone's talking about does look pretty bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Which, what I'm kind of hearing in general is that after all that time, that's what we get. I mean, I know, the vampire stuff seems kind of cool. I mean, the, the, but, yeah, I'm just saying the, si already, the overall but it's size a, of it, though. There's but it's, been, it's a twenty dollar DLC, yeah, right? It's tw yeah, it's twenty dollars. So are you gonna are you gonna put your your money where your mouth is? Uh, you're not gonna use that code. You're gonna put I, it up on the Twitterverse for someone to grab. I or? might just put it on my on my Twitter on my Twitterverse. Um, so should people follow you on Twitter? I think they should follow me. I am at annoyed gamer. <laughs> Thank oh, you for the plug. No Otherwise, problem. Tofu. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'll probably will give that away because uh, yeah, I mean, if I don't get a code for the PC version, I will actually I will actually buy it but until then I will just keep chugging along playing the uh, the mods including the really cool one that came out this week which was basically you get to drive a car around Skyrim <laughs> and it's like this old Mad Max it's style awesome. yeah it's well, really do you cool. think uh, do you think companies trying to secure platform exclusive time platform exclusivity for DLC do you think that's a bad move overall or are you just perturbed at this particular one because this is what PC we're seeing right yeah. Microsoft's E3 press conference every year we're always disappointed we're like oh no big announcements blah 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 but this is kind of the fruit of what they do announce. They pay that money to get the stuff first. So I mean, Xbox 360 owners. Well, I mean, yeah, we do, we do bitch and moan. And it's funny, somebody made the point to me on Twitter this week that maybe if Microsoft stopped shelling out money to secure console, you know, exclusive DLC, and actually invested it in some new IP and some, you know, some great games, we might actually all be a little bit happier all around because, you know, the Skyrim issue, the PS, I, I got like 50 tweets this week, the PS3 version is still broken. PC gamers are getting the shaft. Xbox is, you know, it is what it is, and Microsoft are, are, are spending this money hand over fist when they should be creating some new content for the console for everybody to play. Here's the thing, though. At E3, I was talking to some folks from Activision, and they were basically telling me their DLC for Modern Warfare 3 outsells and generates more money than all the other games. It's not an MPD, but if it were, it would actually outsell 
all these other games as far as revenue that's generated. Not maybe not unit numbers, but money generated over that like four month period. That's what they said. What you, Even what if you factor mean? in Skylanders toys? Well no, I mean no, I'm talking about Modern Call Warfare 3. Yeah, oh, but the, okay. the I reason you meant their entire library. No, 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 no. That Just the DLC for Modern Warfare 3 generates more money than brand new games being released that month. Well, of course uh. it does. I mean one, oh, they have okay. the biggest they have the, the hugest install base on Xbox 360 and two 90% of this uh, of the DLC is completed before launch and is basically locked out of the final game and put to one side. So it is basically monetizing stuff that should have been in the game in the first place. But what I'm saying, you're saying this strategy isn't smart, but it is smart. No, it's, it's not. No, it's it's smart for Microsoft in that it makes a lot of money. It's smart for Bethesda and Activision because it makes them a lot of money hand over fist. The people it's not smart for are the ones sitting here, the ones who actually give a shit about what we want to play. Do you know what I've played on my Xbox in the past fucking week? Two weeks. Madagascar 3, <laughs> the, uh, was it Brave based on the Pixar movie, and the one relatively high point was Lego Batman 2. But there was also Spec Ops and Spider-Man that came out during that time period. I, did, I, look, I, haven't, I haven't got around to Spider-Man yet. Spec Ops, I mean, you know I'm done with the military shooters. But I'm just saying that, you know, those are the games that I got sent and those are the games that I've been playing. Lego Batman, you know, it's fine. I'm just saying that we could, we deserve, we deserve better as gamers, all of us. We deserve better as, uh, better as gamers, and we've got, you know, we've got to stop with this friggin', oh, here, we'll give you this so you can put an exclusive on here. It doesn't sell consoles anymore. I mean, people have bought all I think all it the does. Well, people have bought all the friggin' consoles they're going to buy anyway. They haven't, though. I think this, th this stage, this later in I mean, in why the do you cycle. think the 360 is leading? The PS3 has all well, these see, great okay, Marcus, exclusives. When a man loves a woman, <laughs> they have Very a baby, much. and then the baby gets <laughs> old enough, has a bar mitzvah, and then buys an Xbox 360 or PS3. <laughs> so there's always new people coming up who are right. buying consoles. Yeah. What happens if they're not Jewish? I mean... What? <laughs> the publishers are going to tell you, buy an Xbox 360. That's why they sign these deals. That's why Microsoft pays them the money, is to convince people, I should own a 360. I spent 15 years working at publishers. I, you know, I, I, know you, I know you're right, and I'm just saying, just because that's, you, you, you know, you're right in what you're saying, and that's what they're doing, I'm not saying that's acceptable or the right thing to do anymore. I mean, I'm getting a, getting a bit sick of it. I'm getting a bit sick of, you know, PS3 owners not getting some of the, you know, the GTA uh, DLC well, day one. I'll be or honest. PC owners getting the shaft on on Dawn Guard. Ex I mean, exclusivity for games has always seemed like a good reason to have a particular console. Timed exclusivity for DLC always, I guess, it is effective, but it always seemed like. Who cares? A lot right. of people do. But I guess the people 15 do. 15 million people that bought Modern Warfare. But I mean, that's the weird thing, though, is it's like... It's, I always thought it was really odd. It's effective because they've announced it before the game came out. It's really weird, especially like when you consider that DLC is supposed to be an add-on to your game. But they do get fitted into the advertisements, you know? Yeah. Play it first on Xbox 360. But it's so. like for everyone that's bought the game, yeah, like Marcus is saying, like we're not going to start a, a hundred hour game on another system just to play the DLC. But you knew beforehand, before you chose which system to buy that game on, that that stuff was going to come exclusively yeah. to the Xbox. So I also knew that I was getting the better version of the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Bloodworth. I mean, I <laughs> well, that's a decision the you have to make version. for yourself. Would you rather, I mean, would you rather have mods to play on the PC version, or would you rather play the DLC first? I mean, that's a choice you have to make, yeah. each person has to make for themselves. Well, that's that at least with the PC, you can make that choice. The PS3 owners, uh, with regards to Skyrim, they just fuck three ways from Sunday. And I mean, th if you think about it, the PS3, the ports for PS3, especially out of the gate, were way worse than the Xbox ports, or the Xbox versions of those games. So, people know that. Most of the people that have bought a PS3 know that not as much TLC tends to go into the PlayStation 3 versions. And again, they had to make the decision. Do they want to play the exclusive games that are available for the PS3? Sacrifice a little bit on the third party side. Again, it was a choice everybody had to make when they decided what console to buy. I, 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 I'll, I'll slightly disagree with that. I think there are a couple of companies who are very guilty of slapping out sloppy ports. But when you look at games, uh, for example, like Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, which I played both on, on, on the, the PS3 and I think are superb, Assassin's Creed, again, so, you know, the Ubisoft stuff, superb, pretty much uh, on the PS3, really so solid, uh, you know, solid multi-platform versions. Those I are think, exceptions, though. But I think, I think there, there is enough, to, there is enough uh, good stuff out there to, sh to basically show up the devs and the people who slap out the shoddy 
ports, and we know who they are. Yeah, I mean, and then that goes into the whole, like, why did Sony, you know, use proprietary tech and make it difficult to make games for the PS3? I mean, that's a little bit of them being smug and saying, look, this is a PS3. You may not like making games for it, but you're going to make games for it. And they did. They just didn't end up being as good as the 360 versions. But there are people out there, are games out there that are as good, or if not, I mean, I would actually go to say that I enjoy Batman Arkham City and play it uh, play it way more on the PS3 than I do on the 360 because I think it looks better, I think it feels better. Ditto Assassin's Creed. I would take those I would take those particular games over the Xbox port any day of the week. I agree, but can you name any others? <laughs> That's the problem. Those are ex extreme exceptions. Assassin's Creed 2? <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying though. Batman like, Arkham you can't think Asylum. of any other games that look and play better on the PS3 other than a couple, I mean, if we sat here for an hour, we could probably come up with a, like a 10 or whatever, but the truth of the matter is, most of the games play either equal or look and play a little bit better on the 360. So, again, a decision people have to make when they go to buy their machines. So, Dawn Guard, have they even announced when it'll be out for the PlayStation 3 or PC yet? No, next month, I think. Next month? I think At least that's not too there is a month long of a wait. Well, the launch on 360 came out of the blue, too. Yeah. We knew about it, like, th what, three days ahead of time? Yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a case of uh, just going back to the awesome mods. And by the way, if you are a PC owner and you've got Skyrim, just go and look at some of the amazing mods out there. I mean, the stuff they've done. Yeah, it's not like it's, you're going to run out of things to do. In that yeah, game. there is so much there, that, and it's very easy to install. And, th and that's the thing. I will say props to Bethesda for making the PC version so moddable, but slaps the Bethesda for holding back Dawn Guard. All right, next we're going to talk about the brand new amazing Spider-Man game just came out this week. Ryan Stevens, you handled uh, review duty yeah. on that one. It made me think that people should probably start naming their games like best game Spider-Man <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> like people walk into the store, you know. They already have the They're game of the year. They're calling the newest Spider-Man. Yeah. I, I think Dead Island, uh, there was some website called like, Game Critics, and so and they gave it game of the year, so it was like Game Critics game. I know it's <laughs> a little shady, a little yeah, shady. But, a little uh, bit. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I went into playing Spider-Man over the weekend with a little bit of trepidation, but uh, it ended up being uh, you know pretty fun to, to get through. They. It's uh, what's their? It's Beanox, the the team no one's ever heard of. I guess they were a porting house, but now yeah. they've been for some reason been handed the keys to Spider-Man. They've done the weird, God, Web of Shadows or and the yeah. Time Shadows. They've, they've done all the Shattered yeah, dimensions. which you know they had the, like they had like the first. I think they really the first person Spider-Man stuff because I remember they had like the first person punching yeah, they did. and stuff <laughs> like that. And this game starts really odd with this weird first person walking around stuff where they're setting up the game where you can kind of look around. Are and you then walking like a zombie the entire time. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's actually zombie Spider-Man. No, I'm lying. <laughs> but there is Marvel zombies. Um, and then like sometimes like when you die, it shifts the first person as you like fall over. I don't know. It's a, it's a little weird. Like I know in first person games, you sometimes see your character in like third person for like cinemas and stuff. But doing yeah. the reverse just kind of it just seems a little odd. But uh, the games. I don't know, it's really easy to just pick up and play. Uh, it, they've taken some cues from Arkham uh, Asylum and Arkham City, where it's the kind of, you know, your spidey sense tingles and you dodge and, you know, you press attack buttons, but it's pretty skillless. You know, you're just kind of near someone and you just Spam. pound it, then you respond with a dodge or something like Sorry, that. You just, you just <laughs> yeah, that's how I actually play it. You just pound it. it. Yeah. So one, it's a, you just need one hand to play it. <laughs> and uh, same with the web slinging in the, in the city. Uh, the game's kind of cut into two sections. The story stuff's usually pretty, cr Somewhat cramped. The rooms are big, but you're not really in the city. You're in little layers, bases, prisons, etc. And then when you're in the city, yeah, you get to swing around and have fun. And again, there it's pretty automatic. Um, you yeah, know, how do you I, feel about that? That seems to be a big topic online right now. Is the fact that you know the the web goes and attaches to clouds or whatever. You don't have to be near buildings. You know, web I'm slip. I'm okay, I'm okay with the kind of keeping your momentum going. But what I had a problem with is I would skydive off a building. And then if I go to do a, uh, to go start swinging again, like I'd press it and it, nothing would happen, and I press it again and nothing would happen, and I'd be like, okay. And then suddenly the game decides to suddenly pick up on it again, like it's trying to be dramatic oh. and like at oh, the last second. It intentionally waits to the last second. Not always though, but yeah. like it, again, just kind of like the combat, it's like, yeah, you can have fun and it looks kind of cool going all around, but it's not like you're you're you you can't be good. At web slinging. There's no skill at web slinging. No, I mean, even if you crash into a building, you just start running up it. And it's very seamless in this kind of transversal stuff. But more, it's more of just kind of like a fun go around the city, try to. There's, God, there's 700 hidden comic book pages. Uh -huh. So there's a shit ton of collectibles. <laughs> uh, I would say the side missions, 
<clears throat> were, were pretty good. I remember everyone liked Spider-Man 2, I think, the first day they played Spider-Man 2. And then by the second day they played it, they were like, this game is kind of <laughs> shitty. They're all, but isn't that true of pretty much every Spider-Man game? Well, uh, here they actually worked in some variety with the missions. There was like, you had to take like, uh, you got a camera and you have to do like these weird photos and it wasn't just like generic stuff. You actually had to like hunt down real things or there was like the beat up a mugger, but those are pretty few and far between. And there are some there are some bad kind of pad out collectible ones. Like well, I mean, they've been using the same mission objectives for forever. But it's they like, have the new stop ones. Stop the mugging, take the photograph. But, but that, no, that's what I'm saying though. They really cut down on those and put in more imaginative ones. Like there is one where it's like Spider-Man's doing a stunt race around the city and you don't even control Spider-Man. You control the cameraman and you're just trying to keep him centered, which yeah, it's, it takes like a minute, but it's, it's kind of a fun diversion. Um, yeah, the game just kind of, you know, like, can I say it goes into, falls into the rental category, kind yeah. of? Like, I had fun with it, but, like, I wasn't going to do all, find all the collectibles. I wasn't going to do all of the side quests. The story's interesting enough. Um, the leveling stuff is, they added leveling. Everyone likes leveling. <laughs> it, it, I don't really feel like there's more, much growth. Though some of the side quests will actually unlock new abilities, which I thought was cool. I like when things have a bigger payoff that are just kind of hooked into the narrative a little bit more. Um, and then there's kind of a power uh, triangle between Spider-Man, the mutants, and the robots, which is kind of interesting. So you can see them kind of fighting each other, then they'll turn on you and kind of stuff. Not groundbreaking, but at least it's like somewhat interesting. And the game does have a couple little twists that I won't spoil that, you know, they're kind of typical video game twists, but I was still surprised that they put, like gameplay-wise, but I was uh -huh. still kind of surprised they threw them into the game at all. So, you know, it, it's decent game. Decent game. I gotta Marcus. say, I'd, I'd like, I mean, this, this just strikes me as another movie cash-in. Yeah. Uh, which Activision are doing every year they do with Transformers and, and whatever. Transformers looks a lot better than Spider Man. Well, though. no, I'm talking about the last last year's Transformers, which was friggin' horrible. But when is a mo when is a game coming out with a movie not a cash in? Well, I mean, I mean, th this is my point, and I think this is you know, I hope that Marvel are going to go the DC route of basically pulling these licenses back and saying, you know what, we're going to create a Spider Man game, but it's a Spider Man game that's set in its own universe, not tied into a movie, a la Arkham City or Arkham Asylum, and then you can build the character. Peter Parker, then you can basically evolve the gameplay as you go, make it open world, give it quite, you know, yeah, web slinging is going to be tough at first, but then as you progress, I mean, even in the movies, they show Peter Him Parker learning. experimenting right. well, and okay. slamming into the side to, of a wall. To play devil's advocate, the game does take place after the movie. So, so it's also, just, I guess you could also say the game's a spoiler if you play, but I have no clue. Well, what you haven't seen the movie yet, so there's yeah, no way to know. I mean, it didn't, I mean, I guess it kind of mentions some past occurrences. But well, I guess you'll know if Spider-Man fights some villains. Spider-Man fights some villains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just, you know, I make the point, I, I mean, I do this with a lot of comic book games. I mean, I just make the point that I think having their own games is probably better in the long run. I think Arkham City and Arkham Sam have proven this in that how strong and critically acclaimed they've become and how well they've sold. Well, um, there, wasn't there still like, was the, uh, there was still the, uh, God, the Arkham City I iPad game, right? Which was still kind of right. kind of just a, like a cash yeah, grab a for, cash in. for that space. Now, what know? about the web rush? Because when I saw that game at first, I thought that feature looked pretty cool, but then in your review, you said you didn't really like it. Um, it's just another, it's it's not skill, it's just like, okay, I want to go there. It just gives you a little more fine tuning. You actually, one of your level up abilities is to give you even more time, and that seems ridiculous to me. Because even when you're falling off a building, and you go into it, it's like you're falling so slowly that I think in the entirety... It's down time. Yeah, the entirety of, I mean, it almost freezes time. In the entirety of the game, so you use it in the, the transversal obstacles, like there'll be like, you know, lasers that you can't cross. So. You'll fine tune that you want to, there's a gap in the lasers. You aim right there. I mean, it's momentary, like a little bit of pleasure. You're like, oh, I figured that out, but it's nothing I thought it made me feel like Spider-Man a lot more. How so? Just because that's the way he, he traverses like smaller areas. He doesn't swing. He's like, he has that web shot and it's almost like a bungee cord that like snaps him to wherever he wants to go. It's so automatic and it, with the slowdown, it does kind of break up the momentum. I think the game's, I mean, like I said, even though it's skillless, it's kind of fun to just go around the city. I'm gonna go up there and see if there's any comic book pages or whatever. The web rush stuff, I almost never really used it. In the, I used it, I used it to, for fun in the city because there was a giant donut <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to go right through that donut. Yeah. But here's the thing, it made it so easy. Anyone could do it, right. you know? Instead of like trying to actually land that, that cool shot, trying to dive through there, you just literally point and aim. This brings a, to, to bear a bigger point for me, which is it seems like as games go on, they just take more and more control away. It's well, what, like, what do you think about Assassin's Creed? Like Assassin's Creed 2 and onwards combat. It's like there's a lot going on there, 
but it, the game's like so forgiving, you know? Like, I, like I, I, in Assassin's Creed 1, I died all the time when Archers came out, but in Assassin's Creed 2, I just felt like there's a lot of mechanics here, but it doesn't really matter how well you master them for the most part. Well, if you like, look at any of our reviews for pretty much any of those games, it's ridiculous how they just stand around and wait to get killed like one by one. Would you I, like to counter kill me? Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. They'll just stand there <laughs> and wait yes, to counter kill. Yes, I would. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a fine line that I think not many people have perfected yet with regards to giving you a fair amount of control so you feel satisfied, but also leaving enough that the computer can control for you so that you're not overwhelmed. And I think that's where perhaps difficulty levels come into it more than more and more and more and difficulty levels don't really do that. So all they do is just ratchet up how they insane give a, the enemies, enemies extra are. hit points. Or yeah, as opposed to saying, all right, well, I'm going to step away and you're, you know, you're going to have full control of this, this, and this, and I'm going to turn off the, you know, the, 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 uh, the free running section. You're going to have to time your jumps. And well, so yeah, supposedly, uh, like, you played the new Tomb Raider, right? Mm -hmm. Supposedly in Tomb Raider, there's no sticky grabs. Like, you really have to, like, you know, like an Uncharted yeah, or, like, uh, like Infamous. On. Like, Infamous, I felt like I was covered in, like, duct tape. Like, yeah. everywhere. Like, I would try to fall off something and grab back onto the ledge. That's because he has a lot of games super are like quick that. reflexes. You have conduct <laughs> he's, super elect he's electric. But supposedly, you know, some games are going back to a little more, a little more skill-based of jumps and stuff like that. I don't know. It's going to be yeah, interesting I just feel like see. the whole industry is catered, is not catered to us anymore. The people who want to have control and actually get good at web slinging, like, it's... It's all for the people who buy like 10 games a year now to make sure that when they pick it up, they're not going to be frustrated. They're going to be able to like hit the win button to get through the game. It's very frustrating to me to watch the whole industry kind of heading that way. It's that, like That should be easy mode. Easy right. mode is you narrative know, mode. Boom, boom, boom. But right. how I was playing Mass Effect. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't know what you, what you can do at this point. I'm sure they've done all their studies and they're like, oh, well, a certain percentage of people will only finish our game. And if we do this, then a higher percentage of people will finish it. It's I don't think they even care if people finish their game anymore as long as it's all money in the bank. Well, they do. I mean, we yeah, just they saw. Do. They definitely do. That's what the developers do. I mean, I just saw the developers of uh, Hitman Absolution came out this week and were like, you know, we just did some studies and like 20% of people are going to finish our game. And that is like devastating to us because mm -hmm. you got to realize they build 100% of the game. And most of the people who play it will never even see half of it. So and Square Enix went, whoosh, back to work, peons. Yeah, exactly. Get your game done. But uh, I just think it's a little disappointing to see the industry kind of heading in that direction right now. Come on. All right, so now we're going to talk very briefly about Mass Effect 3. Obviously, it was a huge story a few months ago. All the fans got their panties in a wad, hated the ending, Marcus included. Absolutely. So now, now, like I said, completely against my better judgment, they've gone back and redone the endings. Now, Marcus, that they've done this, are you happy? No. Yeah, I knew, that's the thing. No, I honestly, knew all these people would still no. be pissed off. I, I got to say, that if these were the endings that we got the first time around, there is so much more closure. And yeah, I mean, nobody's ever going to be 100% happy. I mean, I personally um, were, you know, became a big fan of the indoctrination theory, and I thought that would make a great ending. But the endings that they've done this time give you closure. They give you more, uh, they give you more of an explanation as to what else is going on. And uh, that was the biggest issue. You know, yeah. we'd spent... 100 plus hours across three games, creating our own story, making our own choices to basically get a canned cutscene, which was basically the. <laughs> so now you've got these new endings uh, from the extended cut. Not to um, mention all the, the plot holes, which is what really got me is like, how did that happen for the first time around? Yeah, I mean, it, it was very much like, you know, uh, you know when you get a TV series and you get to the, tw you just filmed the 22nd episode of the series and you get told you're canceled and you have to wrap up the entire storyline and every character's ended in one episode. That's what it felt like to me. It felt like the, the, the network had come in and said, yeah, you're canceled, so yeah, and you have five minutes to go, to go and get all this done. And now if it does feel like a, a more proper ending and a, a, a more dignified ending for you know, people like myself who've invested a lot more time. Now, Chris Wynn is here to talk about this. Chris, do you agree with Marcus? Do you think that they made the right choice ultimately now that you've seen the new endings? I mean, adding the end, just add the fact that adding an ending because they're like, okay, we fucked up, that is kind of like, uh, why didn't you just get it right the first time? Yeah. But doing it to kind of appease the, the cries, I mean, it's just, honestly, they didn't really change anything. So 
I guess they're kind of in that regard. They're sticking to their guns. They're like, no, these are the endings. We're not fooling you. There, there was no ending that got cut. These were the endings. We're just going to elaborate more because obviously it wasn't to your satisfaction. They also added another ending. And that ending, you know, instead of choosing the three, you know, the, the three multicolors, you choose nothing. You opt to say, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to play your game. And it's actually kind of interesting how that pans out. I don't know if it's spoilers. Yeah, but I mean, that's what I thought about all three of them is that, you know, before, I mean, that was the big problem is, like, it just felt like you had the same ending with a different color. And they sort of tell you what that means, but it didn't really... It wasn't really significant. They, they definitely elaborated way more yeah, now what, it's what like, it means. Yeah. And they show you the are, aftermath of it, too. And that's yeah, what I enjoyed the most. Yeah, but those they're aftermaths all are pretty lame. Uh, well, in, the, in the, the slideshow I mean. things were lame. <laughs> it's like, yeah. come yeah. on. Yeah, they were, they were, yeah, yeah, the Fallout slideshows. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, some of it was you know, a very special episode of Blossom uh, towards <laughs> yeah. the end. Like, but uh, again, it just goes through. I mean, we're looking at you know, Mass Effect 1 and 2 in particular for me is like a shining example of how to tell a story but make somebody part of the story. And that was the peak for me. And then the, the, you know, the, previous, the, the first lot of endings on ME3 were, were the troughs. I mean, it just, I felt shortchanged. And yes, they're not, they're not perfect, but they are way more acceptable to me and I think to a lot of other people. But, and I think all three of those different, out well, even all four of those different outcomes, really, like, I think they're all very interesting. And like, now that I've seen them, like, I, I, it, it gives me a different perspective of what I would like my ending to be. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's it wasn't really that way before. It's like, well, do I go back and do a different ending? Because I, I don't really, it doesn't really make a difference. Now, what about how they actually handled how you had to go back and play, like, those sections of the game to watch the endings? They added at least, I'm pretty sure they did. They added, they added, a, checkpoint. A, they added a checkpoint right before you, you reach the, the but famous But what's the brunch? point at all? Like, shouldn't they yeah. have really just put the videos out as a video file? Like, we got a lot of grief for posting those on our site. Everybody. They're like, oh, spoilers. It's like... We're not spoiling anything. You shouldn't even have to play that stupid last section of the game again to watch these. So we're actually saving you, you know, some hassle that you shouldn't have to go through in the first place by just watching it. Yeah, well, they did add one scene that was a little bit earlier. The than dialogue the was a little different, right? Um, I'm not sure about that, but there, there was an extra, an, an extra scene before you go up to the Citadel. And, and actually, that's the biggest problem I have with this, is that still feels kind of... Like slapped on there to explain. It's like they're plugging up all the leaky <laughs> plot holes. They're like, yeah, uh, like getting that, the duct tape out. Like you yeah. could have done that still a little bit better. That yeah. that one didn't really add up to me. It felt so direct to the complaints. But yeah, yeah, like I think they should have just like put you back on on the Citadel because all the stuff in between there, even after that checkpoint that they make, it it really doesn't play out any differently. Yeah, it's completely irrelevant. Yeah. So. Don't hate us for putting the endings up. We saved you guys a pain I, in the ass. I got out of bed at 9 a.m. on, uh, was it Tuesday morning or wherever it went live, and literally you know, I asked, oh, is it on YouTube yet? Joking me on Twitter, and within 30 seconds I had 40 links. So, yeah. I mean, yes, it was up, and it was up on YouTube and various, lots of different sites. I think GT, no offense, but was probably one of the last ones to actually get it up because everybody else had fucking, you know, gone and ripped it. Uh, look. I think it's, you know, a lot of people have been saying, oh my God, you, you know, they're messing with their art, they're pandering, they're whatever. Um, Which is accurate. Look, I don't think, yeah, <laughs> I, I've had this conversation with actually some staff here and I've had it with you before. I think if you position a series of games as a story that you control the outcome of, then you are putting your art into the hands of others to uh, enhance their experience and really put their own spin on that art, then it becomes somewhat more community property. If, for example, Uncharted 3, people weren't happy with the ending, because Uncharted 3 is a way more perhaps linear game, I would say, you know what, that's tough. You're basically enjoying the ride with Uncharted 3 or you know, a couple of other games. With this sort of game, it's a different experience. And I'm glad they went back and they, they tweaked it. Yeah, d did they get it 100% right? No, but is it a damn sight better than what we got four months ago, absolutely. So I do say, you know, thank you to them for that. At least we can have some closure and wait for Mass Effect for the prequel where you've got Baby Shepard. Okay, Marcus already answered this, but very quickly, now that it's all said and done, all the drama, now the endings are out there, was it the right call to do this, Bloodworth? Yeah, I think so. The, the thing for me is, again, they didn't really change they just made it more interesting. They made it more developed. But so don't just think about this game. Think about the repercussions something like this could have on down the line with other games. Well, I don't know enough behind the scenes as to 
why the ending was the way it was to begin with. To me, it feels like this is what should have been there to begin with. This is what they would have intended if they had more time or something. That's, you know that's not true. It I, wasn't a time well, constraint for the way they did the ending. <laughs> well, I mean, there are that's a lot of, there are a lot of times it. that things you know get yeah. cut because of they not don't have a game's time. ending. There are there are there are a lot of stories around dis uh, basically saying what went on at Bioware and that the person who decided and put his foot down for the ending is not really the person who's written perhaps the first two games in their entirety, and yeah. that's why a lot of people uh, got upset. Um, look, I. I just wanted to, to, to I don't share. Know. I, that's, to yeah, to me, it's just like, this is the way it should have been the first time around. And, you know, if, if they had done something like had drastically changed it, then that would have been a bad call. But because this is just, again, kind of like an expanded vision of the same thing, I, I think it, it's, it's, it's perfectly fine. Chris? I agree with Blood. I mean, they kind of justified you know, to all the people that were complaining, they're like, "This is this is it." He, we, you know, we acknowledge that we maybe didn't elaborate why, the, you know, X Y Z happened. So here it is, and you know, I do think though that in terms of repercussions down the line, don't I think it's negative because it, you know, people will think, "Oh, well, they can potentially fix." Well, anything. it empowers people, right? Because yeah, now it totally they think does. to themselves, "Hey, if enough of us sign an online petition, we can change any game we want." But I'm thinking, I mean, maybe is there any, any bigger game than Mass Effect Three, and they ha made them change? Story, the game? I, I think, I think story, we're looking yeah. we're looking at uh, apples and oranges, uh, you know, with regards to the, the type of games it can affect. I think we are talking about, you know, in particular, an, an RPG crowd who, like I said, have an investment in it, and I think Bioware have done the right thing in acknowledging, yeah, we, you know, we kind of messed it up. Like I said, Uncharted, you can't change the ending to that. Assassin's Creed, you but can't change the ending But that's the type of stuff that. that's gonna start being breached now. I know, but I don't, I, don't, I don't think it is. I think there are, you know, yes, you're gonna get your whiners who are unhappy about everything, but I think there's going to be a lot of people out there who are going to get the differences in the, you know, the different yeah. types of genre. In and, terms you know, of empowerment, I think to me, it's, it's not, like, it, it shouldn't be, like, an empowerment to, like, for people to say, like, oh, well, we can complain about whatever we want and, and, and it'll change. Like, I think the empowerment should be towards putting that kind of pressure on developers to say, hey, don't cut corners on stuff that's really important to people. But you don't know that they cut corners. That was their artistic decision to make the endings that way. The, your argument that... Oh, they ran out of time. That's insane, dude. There's but no it, way they're going to say, oh, we say ran out of time, thing with here's Fallout the ending. Like, or, not or Skyrim. Happen. Like, those games cut corners on their ending. You spend so much time on it, and then you get, like, a freaking it's, slideshow. It's not so much necessarily, you know, running out of time. It's basically showing the respect to the audience. I mean, it's, you know, it's basically... What about the respect to the artists that created it the way they wanted to? They're the ones making the game. They should yeah, but, be more respect than anybody. But M Mass Effect is not just one, a, a game that's created by one artist. Mass Effect is created by a team. Right, it was and that team Mass sat Effect down one, and had meetings and decided how they wanted to end their game. Uh, from what I have been led to understand from very reputable sources, that when it came to the ending on 3, this was not the case. Well, yeah, and then, ultimately, and somebody has to make the call. Otherwise, people will sit there all day but, and argue. Have a meeting here at GT, and you'll see that. But then, like I said, if you've got something that, that you put out there, and this has been my point and my bone of contention from day one, if you say, complete the story your way, get the ending, you know, your, you know, your ending, and then you, you serve up that, that's fucking bait and switch. I'm, I'll go right back to what I was saying before. I'm not arguing whether the endings were good or bad. I'm just saying that I just think it sets a terrible precedent. I think it was a terrible idea. And I hope to God I don't see more crap like this going forward. Some of the details have been lost in time. It all happened so very long ago. So breaking news we just got through Marcus's iPhone is that Radical Entertainment has just closed its doors. They've been around since 1991. Yeah, um, I mean, and this is basically, it's not officially confirmed yet, but obviously we're, you know, we do keep our fingers on the pulse, and uh, uh, the, the audio engine, one of the audio engineers there, has actually tweeted that our, you know, RIP Radical, um, Activision's community manager is actually trying to figure out what's going on. He doesn't seem to know. So, I mean, basically, this is just breaking news. I think it's kind of ironic that we were just talking about Spider-Man because obviously the prototype engine was used for, uh, has been used for a lot of uh, uh, Spider-Man well, games. Well, they did Hulk. And Hulk yeah. Ultimate, Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Yeah. Uh, one of the games that was launched when I was at I was at Vivendi loved that game. I got a lot of time for the Radical guys. Worked with them obviously uh, on Scarface as well when I was at Vivendi, mm. and it would be such a shame. Um, but given their perhaps misuse 
at the hands of, uh, of uh, Activision. Um, it's sad, but not surprising. The well, Prototype 2 did pretty poorly at retail. Yeah. It's, it was released, uh, you know, it was one of those games that I think Prototype 1, you and I had big back and forth with, and from what I heard with Prototype 2, they didn't correct any of those issues, in f you know, for somebody like me. I don't think it was worthy of a sequel in itself anyway. Uh, which is, but it's just, I mean, if, the, if this is the case, losing a bunch of talented game devs on top of the 38 Studios debacle and everything else, yeah. it's just absolutely tragic. So if this is true and you're from Radical, uh, we're really sorry to hear what's happened. All right, that's it for this week's episode of Invisible Walls. Once again, thank you very much for coming and checking out the new site. And as we said earlier, we are going to be working very hard to make sure it gets better. Uh, what do we got coming up here, guys? Games are pretty much drying up over July. It's going to be a long summer month. I see a lot Am of I... on the hooks in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Am I breaking embargo if I talk about an embargo? No. Uh, I think we'll... Stay tuned on Tuesday for some cool Resident Evil 6 stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah some yeah. real cool RE6 stuff on Tuesday, so make sure you come um, to the site and check it out. We have some guys going to EVO, then yep. there's Comic-Con. Um, yeah, we're going all in on EVO this year. And I'm going year. on vacation. Yeah, I'm actually taking some vacation at the end of the month as well. See you guys. But we will be at EVO. In fact, we'll have a few guys there, so if you go to the fighting championships in Vegas, make sure you stop by and say hello to our crew. Uh, but we're going to be doing some really cool coverage from EVO this year, so make sure you check out the site. It's next weekend, I believe. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be at EVO. If you see our guys, say hello. I'm we'll actually excited, sorry, that I'm going to Comic-Con for the first time ever. And I am not going to Comic-Con. <laughs> first have time in five years, yeah. and I'm about to do a happy dance. I've never been. I've never been, and it's something I've always wanted to do, and I'm, uh, I'm actually getting the chance to go. Not to work, either. I'm just going to wander around and buy shit. I will not miss Comic-Con one iota. Yeah, so if you see me there on the Saturday, just leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's it for this week's show. Everybody have a great weekend and a great week. Invisible Walls is up and out. Ah!